Hi. So, what's the latest here at the Embedded World 2023? Hi there. Well, today we're showing our uh, many new things. This is one of them. This one is called our uh, Jasper Com Express Carrier Board. What you see here is the top side of the board, which has all the I.O. and all the expandable sockets, things like that. And on the back side of the board is the uh, Com Express socket. So you can see here the standard Com Express connectors. This supports a Type 6 Com Express, both compact and basic form factor. And this metal plate around it is a mounting plate. And what happens is the, um, the Com Express and its own heat spreader fit in the middle of it. So this thing is a general purpose platform and you can work with any Com Express Type 6 module. And then the idea of this is that it's meant to be put inside of a rugged system. So it forms a, a scalable platform for a rugged computer system. Uh, and what we have here is that the whole board's designed for rugged applications. All the connectors are rugged and latching. Uh, the board PCB is thicker. If you can see that uh, it's a thicker PCB, it's, it's a 0 0.093 or 2.3 millimeter thick PCB. And then we have latching connectors for everything. Uh, we have M.2 and a PCIe mini card for I.O. expansion. We also have PC104 Express socket here for uh, I.O. expansion as well, which has PCIe by 1 and by 16. So if you have a Xeon COM or later generation COM Express, then you get the PCI Express by 16 lanes. And so uh, this can, can allow access to those lanes for high performance rugged I.O. like video capture or um, graphics or uh, other uh, 10, 10 gig Ethernet and so on. When you talk about the COM Express Type 6, uh, basic and compact, right. uh, there's a lot of stuff that use that? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the, the sweet spot of Com Express, the two sizes. The compact is more popular because it's smaller, 95 by 95 millimeter. The uh, larger size, basic size, usually will have higher Xeon processors or more memory, larger, uh, more memory capacity because it has more room for memory sockets and so on. So, but this worked with both of them. So it was designed to be general purpose so that it could fit either the mainstream or the high-end Com Express. And so it's like a Com port, but much more uh, speed than the old style Com port. Com well, it's whatever the Com Express can offer. So, uh, you know, Com Express comes in many different levels, right? The whole, the whole value of Com Express was well, two values. The first one is that you can design one carrier board like this, and then you can plug in any Com Express module so that you get scalable performance. So, if a customer wants to improve the performance, you can pick a different Com that has a higher performance and put it on there. Or if they want lower performance or lower cost, you can pick a different one. So, it fits the application precisely. The other thing is that because they're all interchangeable, if one Com Express module goes on of life or becomes obsolete or hard to buy, you can switch to a different module. And so it gives you the ability to maintain a product lifecycle much longer than normal. This is really critical for anybody in a long life application, such as military or railway or medical. Those are the typical applications where they need very long lifetime. And so what Com Express or any, any Com based solution does is it gives you access to a, a, a solid platform where the platform itself remains the same but the uh, performance can increase or decrease with time, and it, and it can last longer. So the product so can this, stay alive longer. This is Intel? This is all Intel x86 technology. Where does uh, right. Intel go? Where does Intel go? And how do you uh, design around it? Thermally, everything is smooth? So it's, um, so, so the idea that we do is it's all conduction cooling. So the module goes on here. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you. Oh, here's a module, but it, I'll show you this. This is the module, it doesn't have the heat spreader. So here you can see the Com Express. So this is the actual Com Express module that's mounted on top of, or on underneath rather, in this case, the uh, carrier board. The same Jasper carrier board that you see here is actually here, now it's upside down. And this plastic cover would normally would be a, a metal heat sink cover so that it's for heat dissipation. So all the heat is going through uh, the, the heat spreader and into this uh, case uh, upper surface with heat sink fins on it as normal. And that's so, how the heat dissipation works. So then you can uh, just Throttle it at max speed. Just run. Depending on the thermal characteristics, you, know you want. Depending on the thermal characteristics of the enclosure, you can you can you know max out performance, right? Right. So it all depends on what the enclosure can handle. And what are the applications like two or three? What what what, what so, does that look for? Well, so this this is a rugged system that's really targeting military applications because of the size and the ruggedness. This is this is a uh, typical box PC you would see or mission PC mission computer you would see in a, in a military vehicle uh, where it's got the rugged connectors that are all sealed and super rugged. You can step on them and kick them and, and so on. Um, they've been around for, for decades. They're very solid, very popular. 
And so this is designed, this is, this is intended to be a rugged computer system that offers scalable performance. So that it has Comic Express inside of it so that you can pick the performance level you need, pick whatever processor the customer wants, and also you can maintain a long life cycle. Because again, in military programs, they want the products to go for a very long time. They don't want to risk that the product has to be redesigned if the CPU goes end of life. So with the Comic Express based solution, then the product can last longer. And that's the whole purpose of this platform. And uh, sometimes when some, something is military spec, military spec, it's not necessarily military. It could be all kinds. Sure, this could also be used in any rugged application, like for example, mining. So we have here an example of mining, right? These vehicles also require computers, and they also uh, require extreme ruggedness, high shock and vibration tolerance. So mining is another very common uh, industry where products like this are used. And how about these uh, oil rigs out in the sea? Those usually have uh, a lot of demand for um, uh, wide temperature and, and sealing for uh, rain and water and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe not as much shock and vibration. Although we have a new program now for an oil rig where they're talking about high shock and vibration because they are drilling and the pipes are very heavy and sometimes they drop the pipes on the platform and they said when the pipe drops it's super high shock. So there's another application that where the shock and vibration protection is needed. Are you in rockets? Uh, we have a few projects in satellites, yes. And we are we are actually in some satellite networks that are going up or using some of our products in them. But it's not this it's a different product family. It needs to work up there. It needs and to work. It needs to work for the There's whole, a whole different set whole of issues. Launch. Whole different set. The, the launch for sure is a high shock and vibration environment. Once you're up in space, the issues become uh, temperature extremes as well as radiation tolerance. Those are the other issues. And also uh, zero pressure. So there are other issues with components uh, when you're talking about high pressure or low pressure environments. And uh, this is cutting edge in terms of what people need and what people want in the industry? What's special about Jasper, in our opinion, is that it has a lot of I.O. in a single board and a lot of expandability. So that if you just use this as a platform for your application, then you're pretty much guaranteed not to run out of space and not to run out of time. You can add whatever I.O. you want to expand it in many different form factors, either Minicard, M.2, or, or PCIe 104 as well as you can have your choice of Com Express modules from dozens of manufacturers, and so you have long lifetime uh, as well. And, and, and uh, you can pick whatever processor you want, there's going to be a Com available for it. So that's what this gives you. So, so we're pushing it as a, as a platform for high performance applications that need a lot of I.O. And this metallic plate is required? Or? This is the mounting plate that is used to mount it into the enclosure. It's not required, you don't have to have it, it's just a convenient mounting plate because the, the, the actual cooling is from the Com Express heat spreader, which is inside the middle here. So right. that, this is only a structural member, and it could be done your own way. We just offer this for convenience. But the real, the real uh, her thermal dissipation is coming from the Com Express heat spreader, which is in the middle here. And on the piece of paper right here, you, you talk about some of the, the other specs. Uh, these are just the general I.O. features that it has, right? So you can uh, get a quick view there. Uh, another nice thing about this product is that we come from the analog I.O. world. So Diamond actually started making analog I.O. data acquisition boards. And so to this day, we still sell a lot of analog I.O. And we embed the analog onto the SPC. So we have a whole line of SPCs where we have integrated analog I.O. on them so it saves the customer an extra board. Instead of having to buy an analog I.O. card and plug it on the board, it's all built into the main board. And you so this board has it also. But this board has the same circuit right here. And this, this particular model is the low-cost model, so it doesn't have it but it's available with a complete data acquisition system here, FPGA-based data acquisition with analog and digital, uh, and it has auto calibration to maintain high accuracy over, over wide temperature range. Do you want to show the whole, uh, the whole range of the I can say? show uh, the other products that are similar, sure. So here we have uh, another product. Now this product is called Saturn. This is more of a mainstream, typical single board computer. Everything's on one board here. Uh, it's, a, it's got PCIe 104 expandability, it's got M.2 and mini card expansion as well. And the COM uh, CPUs on the back side, you can't see it because it's underneath the heat spreader. But on the other side of these thermal pads is the processor. Uh, and so this is the single board computer in a more traditional form factor, again with a heat spreader mounting plate for efficient cooling, and then expansion and I.O. are on the top side. So then here again, we have the same analog I.O. circuit as you saw on the other board. And again, this board comes both with and without. Not everybody needs it, so we make it in two versions. This is the model without the analog I.O. And the people who want the analog I.O., they want it for, what's the purpose? Real world, real world, right? So if you, I mean, it's easy to have a thing, serial port, Ethernet, everybody has that. But a lot of times you have 
things like you have to monitor pressure or you're, or you're monitoring water flow or you're measuring light intensity or you're measuring uh, gases in a system because you have some kind of, a, of like IC manufacturing, you need to have uh, measure the gases and the gas flow and the gas purity, that kind of thing. So our boards are very common. Or air quality, air quality is a big application for us. People are measuring air quality. All right. Um, yeah, so all these boards pretty much have an analog I.O. on them. Uh, even this little tiny one called Zeta here, this one I'll bring closer so you can get a better view. Uh, Zeta also has analog I.O. right over in this area. Um, that's a pretty nice lens you have there. Oh, nice. And, and uh, over here, you can see again, it's Com Express. It's a two layer, two board sol solution where you have the carrier board with the IO and the expansion, and you have the Com with has the CPU on it. So that's how we're able to put analog IO on a board this small. Cool. This is called our Zeta board. Uh, so are you famous for supporting the analog IO? I think we're pretty well known. If you ask people about Diamond, they would say, oh, Diamond's the PC104 IO company. We're trying to divorce ourselves from being seen as a PC-104 company because we do so much more now. We actually have four complete product lines that analog I.O. is part of the I.O. product, which is, again, part of the single board computer product line, which is here. Uh, then we have a very successful line of Ethernet switches, which I think you've talked about in the past. So here we have uh, single board switches, uh, expandable switches with daughter boards with more ports on them. Here we have a switch module, uh, which is very much like a com, but the switch module is basically a switch instead of a computer. And the same thing where you plug it onto a carrier board and the carrier board completes the circuit and has the rest of the I.O. So what these are are carrier boards that break out the I.O. on the switch module. So this one is, this is the actual switch with the processor and the firmware and the power supply and everything. It's built-in application software. And this one is the I.O. So it's got the magnetics and the connectors and the SFP and so on. So it just breaks it out to a full solution. Typically what customers will do, is they will buy the switch from us, which is the hard part, because of the all the high, high uh, engineering and software development, and they'll make their own carrier board. This is the easy part. So it divides the solution into hard and easy, so they can get to market much faster, and they can make a custom solution without doing all the work. When you say analog I.O., and you have a history in doing that? You're right. right. When, when did you start doing that? Uh, Diamond was started in 1989. So I've been with the company since the beginning, some of the founder, and so we've been making uh, analog I.O., digital I.O., Ethernet serial boards for 33 years now. What do you do in 89? Time. Sorry? What was the product in 89? Uh, we were making slot boards, actually, PC well, slot boards, ISA boards. And then we moved to uh, PC-104. When it first came out, PC-104 was just the ISA bus. And so we took all of our existing circuits and moved them into the PC-104 form factor. Uh, and then that became very popular. So, and then from there we went to make x86 single board computers, then Ethernet switches, and so on. And it's fun to see all the markets that adopt your technology. You know, we have the craziest applications, applications that we never even imagined. Uh, people do all kinds of crazy things. One interesting application was the company making potato chip packaging. They had to measure the thickness of the material being ma made, the, the uh, aluminized plastic film. Uh, they had to measure it at high speed when it's being manufactured. And so they would zigzag a, a radioactive sensor across the material, and the amount of scattering dictates the thickness of the material. And they would use our analog I.O. board to measure the scattering. So that was an interesting application. That oh. was a very big one for a long time. So we're helping to make potato chip bags. Uh, we I hope have the, the chips aren't radioactive. <laughs> Just the packaging. <laughs> Just the packaging. Then it goes onto a roll and goes off to wherever. You know. uh -huh. um, but you get all kinds of, when you make I.O., you see all crazy applications around the world uh, and things you never even knew about existed, but, but it's just amazing. So a little slice of life. We have something like 500 active customers, which is, which is pretty amazing for a company our size. We have 500 customers and they all do different things. You know, we have UAVs, we have submarines, we have military vehicles, we have potato chip manufacturing, we have uh, medical. One of our big customers also makes a, uh, a, a lung simulator. So all the respiratory equipment in America has to be calibrated so that you don't blow out someone's lungs. So it has to be calibrated for different uh, body types and you know, baby, adult, woman, man, that kind of thing, for different conditions. And so they have a lung simulator that they use to calibrate their equipment. And that uses our computer board with integrated analog I.O. as well. So it's a really interesting application for, nice. for analog. So and here at the Embedded World, lots of meetings with all these... Non-stop meetings. Well, we have a lot of sales partners that come to visit us here. So, so typically we have sales meetings going on all day. This is a small, lucky break in our uh, meeting schedule. 
Um, so I think the guy's off to lunch right now. We'll be back okay. and having more meetings soon. So yeah, we have meetings here and we have some customers coming to see our newest products. Cool. And we're going to do a second video right now. Let's do a second one. Topic. Well, let me show you one more thing though. We mentioned yeah. this product here. This is called Geode, right? Our Geode is our rugged system. What I didn't mention is I mentioned the fact that it uses the, uh, the Common Express module for performance, scalability, and long yeah. life. But yeah. what's also interesting, if you look inside here, if you can get in there, if you can get way inside there, you can see that there's a board-to-board -board connection. So the I.O. board doesn't have cables. All the I.O. All the I.O. connectors are mounted on a circuit board, and that plugs directly onto the main board, so it eliminates the cables in the box. And what that does is, number one, it makes the box more compact because you don't need the room for the cabling. And number two, it uh, allows you to uh, get higher uh, shock and vibration because you don't worry about the cables. And even number three, it makes it easier to manufacture because it's quicker and easier and more reliable to build a circuit board than to build cables. That when nice. we build rugged systems like this, the number one sticking point is always the cable manufacturing. To get the parts, to build it, to get them to build right, to, you know, have them come out right, and not make mistakes. It's much easier to build the circuit board, so, so, so better. You've solved cables. We try to solve the problem, right. And not only that, but also we have built-in expansion connectors. So all of this is for the standard x86 board. All the I.O. on this board comes out these three connectors. And if you want to add more I.O., remember that on here we have a too many cards, piece of one four socket. So if you want to add even more I.O., all of these could get cabled out to these connectors on the back side of the panel board. So the case and the connector design remains exactly the same. So there's no custom design required. So we eliminate custom design, which eliminates NRE charges, reduces time to market, and provides a more rugged, compact product. So it basically solves every single problem that you could think of. And you provide this amazing solution, and maybe there's a big team that then goes on uh, customizing some software or whatever they need. Yeah, so the customer, specific application, right? the customer will basically buy a platform like this, they will write their own application, uh, and they may add additional I.O., like a radio, or some other sensor they have, or some like military bus interface, or whatever it's going to be, right? Maybe they have some other kind of I.O. they need, and they can put that inside the box, and they don't have to do anything with customization, it's all, it's all ready to go. Just plug the board in, uh, and, and cable it out, and you're done. Nice. So it's great for quick turn, easy custom, uh, customized solutions with, with uh, um, no NRE charge. Cool. And then we're going to do another video. Okay. Right now, right? Okay. Sure. Okay. Let's okay. go to the next video. Oh, next video right now? Okay. Okay. Bye.